There we go. Go ahead and come in on this one, directly ahead. Or at least at the point where it did come out. Did we ever get Sirius's lights back on? It does look like to be a small right muscle right. right. Third looks like. To oh, the it right does. Of center, yeah. So we haven't seen many. Uh, areas. Bernard was saying something about one. not Might seeing not very many kind yeah. of. Uh, Might be able to bring the new growth. Yeah, right, you and you're Next right video. that it look, does look like a smaller one. And I was just trying Let's to look the at the this paper here and see there. about. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for is to get a little bit more serious as via the bubbles. Copy bubbles. It looks like Great some shoppers. of them awesome. in the Norfolk Canyon area. Yeah, they nice said maybe have a, like a age range of 18 to more than 25 years. Okay. But it's uh, a really difficult to move. get there a precise forward, chronology yeah. Looking down for at you, these. 75. I think it's almost done, right? Yeah, let's see. See the shimmering of the bubbles here in Sirius View. Oh, something mm. just stirred up a lot of Yeah, sediment. a couple more meters. And I think that'll be far enough for yeah, we can to start push out. south after this. Yeah, maybe push out and see the end of it, and then uh, we'll hook back around. Okay. Good copy. Thank you, Bridge. Yeah, and then maybe drop a target for, like, extent. End of it. Yeah. Extent or whatever. Yeah. Look at all these bubbles. I think the crabs kind of mark the beginning of it, and then this will mark the end of it. Okay. It's surprising, a lot more bubbles on this end. Yeah. Look at them all. Maybe I'll drop a target for that. Yeah. Just definitely steadier flow. Substantial bubbles here, yeah. Look at yeah, the and pilot, I mean, definitely little. drop a target too for this muscle bed. Yeah, I believe yeah, that is okay, great. mapping it out pretty well. Yep. If you want to come in on this one right here, video. Yeah. Rotating down, I got you 9 4, but I think I'm done moving, yeah. Copy that, I can uh, push out. Okay, full wide video. Thought we could catch one there. Right, looks like it continues a little bit up here forward. And uh, looks like it starts to die out. Stretch out, and then we can make our way southbound. What's up? Okay. And if you're just joining us today, we are currently about 40 miles off of the coast of North Carolina, and we are exploring a um, new seep site that was provided to oh, us pilot. by Video Carolyn Ruppel at USGS and Adam Welcome Skarkey roll. with Mississippi hey. State. Um, and we started today's dive around 450 meters, and we have worked our way um, through a couple of our waypoints to about 407 meters. Um, we've seen a bit of authogenic carbonate yeah, um, like four, five, during the seven first or portion of the dive, large. so some rock outcrops. And now we have encountered a um, very nice mussel bed that has um, also a tilt up a little bit generous coating of bacterial mats, both on the mussels and then on the sediment okay, now, as you're seeing. Six um, as we came into Sirius. this mussel bed, we started to see some of these active turn bubble blooms yeah. that are kind of turning on and off as we're yeah. um, going through this area. Yeah. And you can see just the amount of life that's also associated with these mussel beds. The we have multiple more. species of fish as well as crustaceans. Um, and lots of different types of organisms that are also just yeah, growing a, on or, the or shells of the mussels. Yeah, when we uh, first landed, there were 
just the water column was yeah, filled with shrimp now. and fish, Looks like we got um, some large. eels, and we saw yeah. a bunch of um, other types of fish. We'll and it. so before we even started to actually get into the actual Same evidence part. of the seep, we started to see indicators that there was a highly productive biological region, which was really interesting, interesting fish to off see. Top of the screen. Watch well, the snap. Possibly. Yeah, like Carolyn, it. I mean, I, and so I wanted to make again the point that Adam that made that earlier. Which is, uh, remember that almost all of the people on this line north. were originally identified um, by his analysis turn of down oceanic, down oceanic exploration. Oceanic uh, 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 explorer data, geophysical data collected from the ship on past cruises. Sounds good. So this this was really come full circle here. That the oceanists first identified these sites. And now, based on seat maps Big. that we've compiled over the years, we, we, over. we chose a cluster of seats that look good, that met some other criteria for you as, as a suggestion All for you to try as a dive today. Close, so yeah, that just shows not, the value of this uh, sort of discovery and exploration there. mode that yeah, we're in they here. They smart targets. Yeah, so thank you for that, uh, Carolyn. That is okay. a really great point. And, How you know, we that? are in uh, NOAA Ocean Exploration yeah, and research is that, in their 10th year hops. of operating yep. the Okeanos Perfect. Explorer, and this is our 100th mission. So it's a pretty nice, like you said, full circle to go from, you know, mapping, documenting some of these, and then being able to come back and actually dive on these sites and confirm that there is an active seep here. And so now we are heading a bit um, south from the from that mussel bed, and we're going to a point that uh, was observed in the backscatter to be um, go, uh, a bit more hard yeah, than the surrounding area. So um, the idea is to go investigate if this is possibly authogenic carbonate um, in that 30. area um, and understand this site a little bit minutes, better. 15 coming up. And backscatter is just Spurs another is one of the up. kind of parameters we use for investigating before we're actually down here on the seafloor. Here another move in. It's just an indication Range of how hard the meters, bottom is. Bearing um, two one five. And we do see some Speed variation across this site. Good copy. Thank you, Bridge. Oh, you got me at five three. Huh? Yeah, I got you five three. A little more room. Give me a little more tether. So can we get a zoom in? Like there's that crab that's there, and right to the right is some kind of flat reddish fish. Oh, uh, yes. I've seen a few of those. Oh. <laughs> if we don't get a Try to get in close. Yeah, sediment we'll plume. Cloud cover. So Let's get lasers while we go in. Lasers on. I have a little bit of time, so I'll try and line right up with him. All right, thank you. I like the long ones. Tilt down for my little tail fluttering. Coming down. Uh, yeah, aren't they? Good. Okay. Do with lasers? Do you want to come in a little bit? Or is it usually yeah. up clear? Coming off. Oh, I don't know if our lights are disturbing them or not. Uh. Oh, wow. Huh. Stand so I've seen a couple of those, and we just haven't been in a good place to uh, zoom in and get a closer look. But. I'm just a little close, coming back. Feel free to take a little tighter zoom Just before the crab. See what's going on with the crab with him. Make cross movement. Okay, ready for fish. Go ahead. Center up. We're gonna try and pull you in. Coming back. <laughs> yeah, looks like he's got. Trying to bring him back to right. 
Coming up on the rotator a little. Still drifting in? Yeah, I'm trying to set in a little. Once I get a tow in, I should be all set. If we have Still any fish in. folks yep. out there, I'm attempting to do that role. Um, yeah. any help would be <laughs> greatly appreciated. <laughs> it's a very uh, interesting fish. Look at his, uh, just below his eyes. Copy that. We're on the move. All right. right. Come in. I'm looking down at you. Back Six, six nine. nine. How far are we into the move? 20, 23 meters? That's fantastic meters? video yeah. and pilots. It's a good full body. Copy that. Yeah, Coming yeah, back over to starboard a bit. Oof. Oof. That's pretty far <laughs> off. <laughs> Wasn't your touch there, buddy. <laughs> mm. Sorry. You haven't napped enough. Yeah, we should do a shorter move, huh? Leading us clear. Copy that. Watch leads, are you clear? Yes, thank you. Excellent. Looking down at you. 80 degrees. Fish messing with the crab. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> Smoke screen. All right. The crab is going to go you in the for fish. the... Yeah, we don't have a ton of time here. Yeah, that's fine. Man, we've seen a lot of these, these spider crabs are interactions lovely. today. Oof. I don't think I've given up yet. Huh. Oh. Okay. And yeah, that's about all the time. Oh. Yeah, that's fine. Got a nice little bear hug on him. <laughs> all right. Copella, you got me, what, 96? Yeah. Okay. okay. We're still moving, so it'd be good if you... Video, if you could come out. We're going to go ahead and push forward. On our way to waypoint six. And today is an extended dive for everyone's awareness. We will be on the seafloor um, surveying this seep site until yeah, another one um, of those, roughly 16.45 uh, today, so 4.30 p.m. local so time. Be a different color and then we will be doing we um, a midwater transect up in the... Um, That's full rotator. Around, uh, for an hour. We're doing, we're doing one out. long transect yep. for an right. hour today. Come out video. I keep moving here. Pushing ahead. Sorry about the stuff on the glass. Tilt up on main cam. Okay. Yeah, that. <laughs> quite a bit on there. Come to your. Yeah, pour a little bit. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. You got one with the, uh, the legs out, I believe. It's similar to the one that we were looking at. Where do you yeah, right now? I think it's so. similar. If we can just do a quick zoom. Yeah, sure. And you also have another one to the left. Go ahead. And oh, and I think an there's an octopus. octopus. That move is just finishing. Two shots. Yeah, that gives oh, yeah. us just a quick look at its fin that is acting Good like copy. a Good copy. Thank you, Bridge. Okay. Right, top right. An top octopus right. in the right, uh, the crab on the move, oh, yeah. just yep. off to the right. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. How do you get me? It's 100. That move's complete. Though, okay. Yeah, and there shouldn't be any swinging, so. so free to come in. Comfortable. Aww. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm drifting out a little bit. Coming in and up and over. Little bitty guy. Follow on from our Octopus Friday, our cephalopod safari <laughs> yesterday. Coming down a little. Ooh. 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 <laughs> Just a little hop. Coming over. Feel free to come back in. It's great to see such diversity it in is. the animals that we're seeing today. And if we can get a zoom in on the suckers, that would be fabulous. Please. Yeah, we can go ahead and give that a shot. Free to come in video. Come 
right over the camera. Yeah. Mike Vecchione was telling us that that's a really good way to help identify these okay. octopods, Take whether more, they have a single Max or up. double that's row Max. of suckers. Okay. We can try and get closer if you'd like. I'm just worried that he's already frazzled. And I can see yeah, no, row. that's fine. Thank okay. you. That should be good. Oh, no. We'll leave him be. All right, pushing on. Tilt up some. Want to get on the move in now? Or uh, at least we'll wait a minute. But yeah, a little uh, push out a little ways. Still looking down, huh? <clears throat> then maybe 20 meters. We're about, yeah, 37 meters away. So maybe a short one, and then just in case we start to see stuff. Yeah. Ahead of it, you yep. know? Yep. Careful, you're kind of rotated there, too. Yeah. Let's do it. Tony. Last 15. It? Sure. If you want to, like, turn left, I will look at your sonar. Um, and we'll see what we see. Come down a little bit. I can go with you too. You're three meters up. Okay. So you could come down and center with me. Yeah. Okay. Don't see a ton of sonar over there. Probably calling a 20 meter move that way. Copy that. 20 meters at 215. Yeah. It's a little awkward going downhill, but bridge. This is RV Nav. I'd like to call in another move if you're ready. It will be two zero meters, bearing two one five degrees. Speed decimal two knots, please. So your back. Good copy. Thank you. Your back is probably on the ground right now. So you can like tilt your main camera down if it helps. Yeah, it's just a little awkward. But, but maybe, yeah, you could do it large dead and like turn starboard parallel to it. And then so yeah, the back, your back right might be in the sediment right now. Come up a little, come up a little bit, turn right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so right now we are going uh, towards a waypoint that we had identified in the bathymetry, the backscatter, as a possible um, harder surface. So likely yeah, some, or possibly some authogenic carbonate outcrop. So, so we're going to be heading towards that. It's a little bit down slope. Delta's so we will be bit. kind of hovering a little farther above the seafloor for the time Data being. Top screen. Um, but we should get down there in a few minutes and check it out. And then we will kind of head back up towards where we expect to find some more active seeps. Here's a nice Tina 4 in the water column. Okay, so target selected from D2, 30 meters out. I don't see anything in your sonar. Hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah. So Lars is doing work pretty good for. No, you're fine. Yeah, I would, you know, just do the straight. Squid ink, looks like. Yeah, he just inked as he swam off. Still a lot of crabs. Just milling around. Got you at 70 degrees. So you could uh, kind of come down. And I'll come down with you. The waypoint's basically 90 degrees to your port at the moment. If you look at high pack, you can see straight down here. Copy that bridge, thank you. <laughs> Isn't it? Once we get there, I see more shells coming up. That's a good sign. Pilot type movie's complete. Yeah, the target's kind of down there. Yeah, maybe, yeah, it looks like it's kind of starting here. Maybe give us a rotate side to side. Yeah, we're definitely seeing more of these shells, shell debris. I see a lot of shells on the left. And then a whole bunch more uh, live mussels, looks like, coming up here. Copy. We're stopped, so I can turn my head a little bit here. Keep you in the middle. Yeah, so, yeah. So it kind of runs up. Yeah, runs like that. And then there, target was to your port. Do I still do a little 10 meters towards you or? Okay. Yeah, a little bit. So yeah, this is definitely another active zone here. 1.6. Don't see anything hard in sonar. I don't see any big rocks or anything. Um, I can't tell if these dots are the fish around Sirius, if those are bubbles. I haven't seen any bubbles with T2. Have you, video? Not yet. Copy. I'm interested in what that bright white object is on the screen. Go down a little bit here for you. Yep. Yep. So you can, like, yeah, turn starboard and, like, yeah, it's a. I don't know if that was you or not. Maybe a little avalanche. Maybe we can just kind of go for that. We'll blame it on the hagfish. Got you at fifty one. So sounds good.
Yes, it's quite a uh, another large live muscle patch. Again, we're at a little bit of an awkward angle for our ROV pilots, so we're probably going to have to hover a little higher than we have been previously. Oh yeah, and Adam Skarky makes a good observation that we are seeing more shrimp here. We saw a lot of shrimp at the start of our dive oh, yeah, where we landed D2. and uh, then we didn't see as many and yeah. we are seeing more than we have which is interesting yeah. which we are also a little higher above the sea floor well, i'll basically just move where you are and then you can go over the mats 10 meters two yeah. two five. Okay. That's good. Bridge, this is already you, now. You have a little bit of tether, so you can push out to these guys, get closer to these muscles. Ready for another move if you are. Seems a lot good. Much Range is 10 patch, meters, 1, 0 meters, bearing 2, 2, 5 degrees, speed 0, decimal 2 knots, please. Good copy, thank you. So we're basically right on waypoint six. I'm getting a little closer, so you have more tether to explore this. Wow, look at them all. Yeah, so we're wondering if the um, the high back scatter is possibly just this really large muscle field again, and maybe seeing some more bubbles on the Sirius near scan, or sonar scan. They can just maybe, maybe go up that line to the right, just at this zoom level. That anemone just reacted to that fish there. Not as many crabs on this muscle field as we were seeing. Can we get a tight to that one with the hole facing us on the right? Push. Yeah. Look for another thick patch. Pretty nice deep there. Look at them all. Patch to the lower left looks solid. That move looks like it's done, Tony. I'm looking down at you, 61. Got, got some tether to play with. Yeah, I got 
kind of goes down and up. So we can kind of get in the middle of it and then go up it probably. I haven't seen any bubbles here, have you guys? Not yet. I haven't seen any bubbles, vi visible bubbles, yeah. but. None have stuck out to me as big as the other ones. Yeah, I'm I mean, it's likely here. that this whole area I think along I'm here. bubbles on the left. You see that bright white spot on the left, right where that shrimp is, and forward. I don't know. I don't think so. You've been off the ground. Okay, video swapping out. So, Carolyn, I have a question for you. So USGS and uh, you in particular have been such a good partner with NOAA over the last 10 years as we've Push explored forward. Forward uh, yeah. a lot of these methane seep you communities. Can you tell us a little bit about how over the last 10 years we've, what we've learned about the, the Atlantic margin here and some of these chemosynthetic communities uh, and the methane, what, what we've learned and what we knew about 10 years ago and what we know now, I think that would be really interesting for folks since you've been such a key part of that, and you too, Adam. Um, yeah, well, it's kind of a loaded question. Um, I, so just as a reminder, before about 2012, uh, we didn't, we only knew about a few places in the margin with published seep. So that was the Blake Ridge Diapir, where I've actually been working since I was a, baby assistant professor back in the early 90s to um, there was some anecdotal, uh, there was some, some unpublished work about um, the Baltimore Canyon seep site at about 400 meters. So really that was it. Um, and maybe some hints of the Cape Fear diapir. And then there was this sort of explosion with the Oceanus having, starting to acquire water column data. So again, I emphasize that the seeps didn't just start, it's that we started using the technology that we had actually had in hand for quite a while to image bubble plumes. And that's how I kind of got involved in this. We were contacted by NOAA about all of these bubble plumes, like what could we possibly be seeing here? And that sort of led down this path. So by 2014, uh, when Adam and I published the Nature Science paper, we were up to about 570 uh, unique points that have been identified. Um, we updated that for AGU based on uh, Adam has done and his students have done an exhaustive job going back through more recently acquired Oceanus data. And my own group has done, I think, five or six cruises out here since 2015 where we've collected uh, independently collected data. And so by sort of combining that, we came up with a bunch of new locations. The problem gets to be, as it now is on the Pacific margin, which really only started publishing their seats around 2015, that determining whether something's a unique position on the seafloor or not is difficult. Um, in any case, uh, since then, obviously, Sydney Vander had done a lot of the work uh, down on the Blake Ridge seat, and uh, we were part of some NOAA work, uh, NERR work back in 2001-2003, uh, and that was really the first um, exploration of the chemosynthetic communities on the margin, but then since then quite a bit of work has been done. Um, there, there are still only a handful of published studies. Adam led uh, a chief scientist training cruise for UNOLS in which they looked at the VEACH or VEACH, however you want to say it, seeps on the New England margin, and published some papers. Uh, obviously, Nancy Prouty from the USGS's papers in Baltimore. There are a few other um, really important papers out there, Andrew Quattrini, um, other people out of Amanda Demopoulos' group, um, Senator Brook, and Gentlemen. has been very active in this area as well. But obviously, I think we're getting now to the point where a lot of people have a lot of really good data, and we're really going to start seeing an explosion of what we've so. known. I shouldn't leave out the fact that Cindy Vandover actually had funding for HOV cruises, uh, Alvin cruises, already at the time the seat discovery became much larger and went back to NSF yeah. and got additional dives. 
so that she was able like to ground here. truth more of the newly found Pretty seats good returns, on her 2015 cruise, which Adam sailed on as well. I should also add that from that cruise, a bunch of carbonate rocks were collected, and we've yeah, been working with our colleagues at the British Geological uh, Survey and are just finishing up now a really nice one. study of dating the methane better. emissions yeah. along this margin in a lot of different places based on those carbonate so I'll stop there because we might be on something interesting. I'm on a different screen right now, but um, I hope that answers some of the questions. So, Nav can it does. Uh, correct Thank you, me Carolyn. Wrong, yeah, the, uh, but, uh, so we're celebrating our 100th kind of cruise here, here on the Okeanos Explorer. Uh, this yes. this expedition and, um, and then, the uh, and then the change of what the has plan was happened and what we know along this. U.S. East Coast which line about these Jim hemostatic has communities active, has been a, a very important it's contribution. Prob it's that this uh, and I know USGS this is uh, just has played a key part of here. that. So thank you. I appreciate it. So. And Adam, at some point, if you want to tell us sort of how you were at the time one of our mapping leads here and really leading some of that effort, if you would, wouldn't mind telling us about a little bit how that went, um, it'd be lovely. But you can use it to fill at some point in time later today. It doesn't have to be right now. The last oh, I can I can speak minutes. a little bit right now, but but feel free to stop me sure. if we come yeah, up on something to... really impressive if we want to stop and look at. What do you have there? But I'll just Adam. mention that you know uh, Carolyn gave a great overview zero, and, like and and to give some context, uh, that's right. Uh, in 2011 um, so 2013, so I was um, the mapping lead um, on the Okeanos Explorer, um, okay. along with. Um, my colleague, Mash Cormalik, and Will okay. Becker, oh, and, and now Shannon Hoy down there in that position. And, and so uh, there was a really focused effort to map the margin at that point. Um, it started yeah, out with uh, the Acumen expedition and the wall since then. Watch, and so we and just the idea was to use the Okan really Explorer to the tether. sonar to get really high quality out, maps so of the sea floor bathymetry, the shape of the sea floor. We certainly were very cognizant of the water column mapping ability of sonar. Uh, in fact, NOAA, you know, uh, NOAA Ocean Exploration had made a, a point yeah. of, um, also before many other groups were, of saving the water column data and preserving it as a record. And, and what we saw in 2012, we were on a mapping cruise off of um, Norfolk, Virginia. Okay, it was uh, very late November, okay. right before That's Thanksgiving. Um, so we'll very cold, very high seas. This way, then. And um, in the middle of the night, we uh, were mapping and saw what appeared to be a gas plume come across. Uh, the, the data acquisition screen. And what I'll say is, is exactly what, what Carolyn noted, which was um, geologically, knowing the geologic context of margin, we did not expect plumes. So it was a bit of a surprise when we sort of had to do a double take. And, and I remember pulling down the data and, and plotting it up in some software tools to really confirm had we really seen the seep. And actually over the course of that expedition, which was EX-1206, we imaged four separate sites, um, one near Virginia and then three up near New England where we, we saw Keep gas coming, coming up the seafloor. And I was actually the person who initiated that email that Carolyn mentioned to the USGS, the her gas hydrates group there, her and, and at the time Laura Brothers was was working on some gas seep work and, and just asking them, hey, we, we detected these things that look a lot like gas seeps that the Oceanus Explorer has seen on the West Coast. Yeah. Uh, we know geologically we don't expect but them to be here, but, but this looks a lot like what we're seeing. And, and that sort of started the effort. Top. And um, really what i say is we, we followed up after that. We got really lucky and had a, um, a hauling scholar, which is an internship for undergraduate scholars within NOAA, um, come work for us for a summer. Three, and she went through yep. um, 94,000 okay. square kilometers now, of multi-beam water column data, collect, or multi-beam data collection on this margin, and, and we went from those sort of four sites with about 20 bubble plumes up to yeah, 570, and that was there. 2013, and as Carolyn mentioned, then that number just continues to grow now. One of the, as she said, one of the challenges is how do you actually count these things? For instance, today we've been on the dive. Okay, 320. Uh, depending on how you want to count it, you could say this we was just there. one really big bubble piece, yeah, or you could say that there were, yeah, I think we've seen tens of sites of individual bubble plumes today. So, you know, how do you count that in terms just of counting 30, sites? 230 hops. But yeah, sure. The point being is, you know, you go up. to these sites, yeah. Um, as good. Noah has done multiple times, and, and also sure, folks sure. like Cindy Van Dover and, and Carolyn's group at USGS. And uh, when, when we dive on these Where's sites and, and are able to visually confirm what the multi-beam sonar has indicated, uh, we often going? do find these humans. Do a partial zoom video? 
And that's really amazing. Uh, yes, give I it am. some context, uh, um, I, sort of, in this I idea of what we've learned in the last 10 years. Is go, go ahead, video. A little Range further. 30 meters. I, I like to remind folks. Um, bearing 320. The existence of chemosynthetic speed uh, life two. has only been known since the 1970s in the, the work in the Pacific on mid ocean Good bridges. Counting. Thank you. And for a long time, we thought chemosynthetic communities only existed in these mid-ocean ridges and middle of ocean basins that are relatively far from the shore. And uh, what we've seen with these cold seep sites is that we have these chemosynthetic communities literally right out our back door. Um, you, know, you guys are just uh, uh, you know, 100 kilometers or so off the east coast of the United States, and, and we, we now appears that we have hundreds of these sites. Turn on. From a, a certainly light. very geologically interesting because sure. it expands our understanding of the like paradigm and the geologic context here, but also for the yeah, ecologist and biological community. I mean, this is really breathtaking that um, is on, we is have on. so many of these okay. sites where we have chemosynthetic life uh, much much closer to our shores than we previously thought, sure. and, and it turns out that they, they may well be very widespread. So that, that kind of gives a, a, a right. sense of what we're seeing and, here. And, you know, and Carolyn's right. Uh, I'll, I'll wrap yeah, up real quickly here. But there's just a, there's so much more we have to learn. Yeah, each one of these guys, when you start asking new degrees. questions, you know, what we've been trying to do the last so maybe really few really days is to talk about what we typically would expect at these sites. And, and I don't think there's any you such thing as you know, typical expectations. Just like we just have to <laughs> visit enough to understand exactly what's going on. So there's a lot of great questions. I think Carolyn's absolutely right. I think research... Um, uh, and publications yeah. and, and further yeah. research on these sites that are about to explode. I think there's a lot of really good scientific questions, but, uh, you know, geochemistry, biology, ecology, geology, um, that have a lot of really important and far-reaching implications. So I think uh, those of us who are in this community are really looking forward to that um, and, and what will happen over the next 10 years. And I think that yeah, the work that we're doing today and that I, I expect OCAN is going to continue to do, we're going to play a huge part in that. Yeah, thank you for that, Adam and, and Carolyn. This is a really great uh, story, the context of this and the importance. And, uh, you know, I really like Carolyn's uh, comment in the chat that, you know, what we're seeing today is really a uh, pretty incredible find, you know, that we haven't seen this, uh, a new location with this extent of these um, muscle beds and yeah, the I'm seepage in, in a fair okay. bit of time. So this is really exciting to be Coming seeing a this bit more to at this site and um, this a bit. high amount of muscle beds where it looks like we're coming into another one of these or kind of back up on this ridge. We see some active seepage right here in front of us right now coming out of this one hole. We're oh, seeing yeah. a lot more of these bacterial mats wanna, again. Actually, do we want to uh, hang out here for a bit? and look or uh, yeah we? we might as well yeah. try to get a little uh footage of the active seep okay just let me know when i need to leave chris okay sounds good do you want to keep the ship moving then yeah i think so okay i, I think uh I'll just do this quickly about halfway there anyway okay okay but we can go partial <coughs> And my own uh, personal oh, you can see it in uh, input too. to this oh, is wow. that uh, bubbles, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that I was on that uh, chief scientist well. training cruise that Carolyn had mentioned that Adam was one of the uh, co-leads on with Cindy Vandover, and uh, that was I guess back in 2015 now or 2016, uh, and. Sure, it's okay. Go ahead, video. It really, that was my first uh, experience doing deep sea work and being able to see some of these types of communities farther north off of the Massachusetts coast. And it was really uh, amazing to see. And it's really interesting to see the similarities and the differences to uh, the site that we saw at 1,400 meters or so on that cruise compared to this site here around, you know, 415 meters. Looking good. I'm at 9-0.
Looking down at you. Maybe. I'll uh, kind of settle back to your center line. Yeah, you can get pretty good shots of the streams coming up. That's neat. And I've never seen bubbles come up at Sirius' yeah, camera. <laughs> me either. Thanks, pilot. That yeah, was great. Yeah, makes a great point. That cruise in, sorry, interrupt, that cruise in 2016 was was great and kind of a testament to what okay, Carolyn was speaking back about. To port. That the uh, NFF funded a Yolnos yeah. cruise focused uh, on these huge sites for um, to train a lot of folks in the the ocean research community. Kind of as a testament to uh, um, perhaps the implications and the importance of these discoveries that um, the Okeanos has made. Yeah. Now, do you so what is, we're seeing, you know, a lot of these white uh, bacterial mats, but there were also seeing, especially there? around one There's of those of seeps, there. it looked to be a darker grayish. Is that another type of bacteria, or what's causing the, the, the skids difference video. in color? Anytime you'd like. just want to see what they that wasn't, Was it oxidized sediment, or was okay. it actually matte? I, w I didn't look at it closely. I'm on a small screen here. Yeah, I didn't see maybe... Um, pilots maybe we can get another zoom in down there you can see the white matting but then there's also a lot of that dark gray if we yeah. could just get a another close-up of sure. that please and that ship moves just about done is that right jim correct okay wow this area is really seeping it really is yeah and it there aren't as many mussels, but there's a lot of the bacterial mats. So is that possibly an indication that Copy, this is a newer seep area? Unless one of the biologists, the ecologists is on, I mean, I think sometimes they think that the mats are where um, it may not even be newer. It may just be a different flux level, basically. Okay. So because the we'll mussels have to actually burr, like they have Jim, to put their, we'll what are they called, a foot down into the sediment sites um, and get and extract it, it whereas like the mat thing is, uh, just sits right on top and pulls it out, right? So might want to drop I think one it's here different. Where D2 the is, the just, levels of uh, bigger of the flux. We label it okay, something like gotcha. multiple seeps or something like that. <laughs> All right, video, let's zoom in. I'll I'll uh, pan over to the left to get that darker patch after we get a nice zoom on this. Yeah. Hold that. Oh, that's great. Very active. Oh. Yeah, you can see the bubbles go past your light bar, so that's cool. <laughs> Um, should we try activating the headlights and the still camera? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's try it. Ready for lights? Coming on. Oh yeah. There we go. And still cam on. Oh yeah. Nice. I'm looking at you. Sixty. Degrees. I don't think that's changed. Okay. Yeah. Um, you might have to switch the video router to. I think it's on ROV aft right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's. I forget. Is it monitor eight? I think is what they made it. Uh, four. It, I know the. It doesn't match with the label. Oh. Um, I can't remember. It's yeah, really see interesting aft, to yeah. see okay. the uh, yeah. bubbles. Yeah, RV still right there. Yeah. Hello, Kish. And the okay, let's come out a little bit, Bob. Confirm. So what's your camera angle at right there? Minus 30. Okay. I'm going to tilt up and then tilt down to get a few extra degrees. <laughs> Copy. That, like Get a swimming. running start. Yeah, that's a little bit another degree or so. Yeah, it went from 32 to 35. That's I think I've seen it as far as 36, but that's all. Wow. It's close to centered up. 
up there as well. Back up a little bit. Yeah, nice. Do you want, uh, I think your lasers are still on. Do you want them off for that? Uh, I think they're off. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, they are. Sorry. Oh, I think it's a fish. It's a red fish or a shrimp or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably, yep. Ooh, yeah. So, uh, watch leads, uh, Bob Carney, who is not on the ch on the phone call, um, and who is much more of an ecologist than I am, yeah. pointed out that the mussels it's are getting their reduced material from water using their siphon. Um, so there, there is a difference between how the mussels are making a living, so to speak, and how the bacterial mass are making a living. So that may sure, explain that, the yeah. differences in the distribution relative to where the methane flux is most active. Okay. Go ahead and zoom in. That makes a lot of sense. That oh, is a nice. really great shot. It's kind of cool. You got bubbles in the foreground and yeah, in and the back. And up here, <coughs> all over. It's uh, a the what is that? cam is uh, cool too. What is that translucent, like creature, on the bottom left? You see that? Or is that a creature? Is that? You see what I'm saying? I do see. There's like, there's. Yeah, on the left, bottom left, or is that a bacterial mat? No, it's definitely oh something yeah. that has, that, yeah. looks possibly like some type of, yeah, some type of worm. Huh, that's cool. It's got a little red base to it. Yeah. yeah. Nice, Bob. We'll hold this for for a little bit. All right. I think I got some good ones with this still. Good, go ahead and secure it. Copy. All right, Bob, whenever you're ready. Okay. Okay. Do you want to hold like that for a bit? Um. There we yeah, there we go. Wait for one more stream from that one in the foreground, then we'll move on. Sure. No. I'm going to turn left a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and we have, 
really dense bacteria growing here on the sediment as well as on the um, on the mussel shells. That's cool. Okay, maybe just five or ten more seconds, Bob, or whenever you're ready. Let's, you want to zoom in on that one down below? I'm going to back up a little bit. Hold that. And it'll tilt up. See it in the minute cam, it'll pass by in a couple seconds. You got any more zoom? It's max? Okay. Right. Lots of <coughs> activity right. up in the we water column out. as well. Yeah. Not we as dense out. as when we Thanks. first came down, but if you look in the Sirius cam or down camera two, yep. you can see just how many shrimp Fog and fish out. are up Thanks. above D2. That's a cool shot with the black background. That is really great. This is a Ooh, yeah. beautiful bacterial what map. What if we tilt up and you zoom in? We get the bubbles with the dark background, like Chris is saying. Yeah, hold that. That's cool. Bob, just adjust focus to each individual bubble as it's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks, looks great. <laughs> um, I'm going to tilt down and then I'm going to tilt up and follow the bubbles up into the darkness above. Try to go at a nice steady pace. Alright, ready Bob? Uh, that one stream failed you. Yep. <laughs> so we're just pretty much east of Waypoint 7 <coughs> now, right? I guess a little south of east. Yeah. About 20 meters. Really Let's great try, work there, Let's try one more time, Bob. I'm going to make it up a little faster team. this time. It's um, fantastic at this video with the, the rising bubbles um, to really convey exactly the process that are going on here with the, uh, the gas coming out of the sea floor and up into the water column. Why don't we come out a little bit? Right, and to reiterate a point that Adam made earlier, um, the methane that's emitted at the seafloor does not make it to the CR interface for the most part. So 
the nominal cutoff that we use is about 100 meters. So methane that's emitted from the seafloor greater than about 100 meters depends also on bubble size and some other factors. Generally does Always not make it across place. the air <laughs> interface, but that doesn't yeah. mean Sorry, that it doesn't have an impact. So in the water column, yeah, gotcha. methane is oxidized to 